Say hello to the Medic, a build centred around healing, but who won't be bound by the Hippocratic Oath. If you enjoy these builds, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you never miss an upload. The Medic has Strength 3, Perception 1, Endurance 9, Charisma 1, Intelligence 9, and Agility of 5 and Luck 1. Strength is by no means a vital stat for this build, and we only have it raised for perks. In addition, Perception isn't going to help us too much, as we aren't a VATS based character. Endurance, however, is our tied highest stat at 9, as the Medic is a man who will take a dozen bullets for someone else if it means they survive. He is not a man of words though, and is always straight to the point with no time for small talk. Intelligence is at 9. The Medic is incredibly smart, and has extensive medical knowledge. His mind is more akin to that of a computer than an average human. Agility is at 5 for this character. We want to be able to get around at a decent speed, and extra action points will help us to keep moving at all times. Last of all is Luck at 1. The Medic never believed in luck, and relies purely on his own abilities to sort problems out. The essential perks of this build are Medic, Commando, Armourer and Science. As this build is called the Medic, it makes sense for us to have the Medic perk here. This will make Stimpax and Radaway far more effective, and works really well for significantly increasing the survivability of this build. Commando is going to be our damage dealing perk. Automatic weapons give us a decent bit of variety, and let us deal some serious DPS. Armourer and Science are going to be the two most important modding perks for this build, letting us fully customise our power armour to make it the best it can be. The recommended perks I've included are Life Giver, Solar Powered, Gun Nut, Nuclear Physicist and Chemist. Life Giver and Solar Powered both have similar roles, giving us extra hit points and health regeneration. Solar Powered is arguably the more powerful of the two in the late game, but Life Giver does have the advantage of working all the time, meaning you don't have to focus on just fighting during the day. Gun Nut is going to help us mod out our weapons to ensure they're as powerful as possible. This will also give us a nice bit of variety with how we want our weapons to work, especially when it comes to scopes and sights, letting us have weapons for different ranges. Nuclear Physicist will make Power Armor usage more efficient. Power Armor is a key part of this build, and we don't want to have to ditch our suit at any point just because all our fusion cores are burnt out. Last in recommended is Chemist. This perk will make drugs last longer, and opens up a few more crafting options on the chem station. Chems play a strong role in making this build incredibly powerful, and having them with a longer duration makes their use more efficient. The role playing perks of the build are Sneak, Chem Resistant, Action Boy and Nerd Rage. Sneak allows us to sneak past the occasional fight, if we so wish. The Medic isn't a bloodthirsty individual, and will take the opportunity to avoid taking human lives when he can. Chem Resistant is handy to have due to the extensive use of chems with this build. With this perk, there becomes almost no downside to regularly dosing yourself up, giving you a safe edge in every fight. Action Boy is here pretty much to just help us move around the battlefield faster. The quicker refreshing action points will help us move in more of a start-stop fashion, sprinting between cover if we need time to reload or think up a plan of action. Last of all is Nerd Rage. This perk will almost never activate once you get into the end stages of this build. I was playing on very hard difficulty for almost all of the playtesting, and I still can't remember this activating for me even once. The reason we have this perk here is as a backup safety net. If our other low health measures don't work for any reason, we still won't die, and we'll instead get an additional chance to take down our enemies and get some healing going. The Medic was a naturally gifted individual. From his youngest years, everyone could see how intelligent he was, and knew he would do well in life. When he leaves school, he immediately starts working to become a doctor, and easily obtains this career, spending several years helping people and saving lives. As the years go by, the war against China becomes more prevalent, and he decides to join the army. To him, the communist threat is not one to be taken lightly. Despite being a healer, he truly believes that fighting is the right course of action. He brings a mixture of passion and intelligence to his new occupation, and it proves to be a deadly combination. He was smart enough to carry out advanced tactical plans, and his fury meant that he wasn't shaken by fear. His squad mates greatly appreciated having him around for his medical expertise. No matter how badly hurt they were, he could patch them up and ensure they made it back to base safely. Despite his skill set, not every fight went his way. On a routine patrol, his squad was ambushed by a large Chinese force. 
Two of the American soldiers died almost immediately, and the rest of the squad scattered and fled to the nearest cover they could find in the hope to not share the same fate. The Americans started to lay down fire whenever they could, but they were trapped. There were too many enemy soldiers for them to have a chance to flee without being gunned down, and they didn't have the firepower to win a straight gunfight. Instead, the officer of their squad instructs the rest of them to stand down, and he said he would turn himself in if the rest of the squad was free to go. The officer called up towards the enemy, and was fortunate enough that one of them understood English. A deal was struck, and he put down his weapons and walked forwards out of cover and towards the enemy. The rest of the squad began to walk away, but the medic couldn't let this stand. He had heard of the horrors that happened to captured soldiers, and couldn't let this fate befall his commander. Instead, he put down his weapons and walked slowly towards his commanding officer with his hands raised. Both sides were confused by this action, but nobody opened fire. Tension hung heavy in the air, but nobody was willing to make a move. Taking every step painfully slowly, the medic eventually reached the officer. The Chinese soldiers looked at their own officer to look for instructions, and, whilst their attention was elsewhere, the medic grabbed his superior by the shoulder and pulled him away and back towards the rest of the squad. Seeing this betrayal, the Chinese forces began to open fire, riddling the medic's body with bullets, but he made sure that none of them reached the officer. Despite the immense pain and damage, he continued moving forward, trying to make as much distance as possible between the two sides. Seeing what he was attempting to do, the other soldiers returned fire against the Chinese forces, laying down suppressing fire to assist the medic. With this added assistance, the medic and officer were able to start sprinting away, getting to a safe distance and in turn providing suppressing fire for the rest of the squad. This led to the squad being able to escape the ambush, but the medic passed out shortly after, and woke up some time later in a hospital bed. He was informed that the officer had been able to keep him alive long enough for the squad to carry him back to base and have him operated on. The doctors had been amazed at how he had survived despite having dozens of bullets embedded within him. His injuries meant that he was no longer able to serve in the military, so he ended up returning to civilian life and once again became a doctor. He lived a more relatively normal life, up until the day he and his family are offered a place in Vault 111. There are two factions this build will join, the Brotherhood of Steel and the Minutemen. Both of these are acceptable choices to finish the game with, but I personally feel that the Brotherhood is the slightly more fitting of the two. Both sides will help out the human population of the Commonwealth, but the Brotherhood has a stronger focus on this, as the Minutemen are a bit more forgiving with non-human races. That being said, the two factions will be almost identical for the Medic, so help both out and don't side too much with one over the other. For companions, I would recommend travelling around with either Paladin Dance or Preston Garvey, but any morally good human follower is acceptable. Make sure to fulfil your medic role and heal them whenever they go down. I actually ended up travelling around with Dogmeat for most of the playtesting, but I don't personally recommend this. It's much better to have another human for additional firepower. When playing as this build, I highly recommend using the Syringer Rifle. This really helps with the feel of the build, and although it doesn't have a ton of practical use on its own, it works very well as a support weapon. Play around with the different syringe recipes in order to see what works best. In terms of modding this weapon, I personally went for a long recon scope, letting me tag targets at a distance. Although this made it harder to land hits at close range, the rifle appears to get a significant boost to accuracy in VATS, so you can use that for closer range shots. For your damage dealing weapons, I would recommend the Overseer's Guardian and Virgil's Rifle. These are weapons which particularly shine in their automatic variants. The Overseer's Guardian is great for any combat situation, dishing out a ton of damage, and Virgil's Rifle excels at eliminating super mutants. In addition, feel free to use any other good automatic weapons you come across to add to your firepower. The armour for this build is a full set of winterized power armour. T45 has a nice clean look to it, but I personally prefer the slightly dirty T60 set, as I feel it better showcases the wear and tear of travelling through the Commonwealth. The most essential mod to add to this suit is the Medic Pump on the torso. This will automatically deploy stim packs when you're low on health. Combine this with the Medic Perk and you're pretty close to Immortal. Whenever your health drops low enough, it gets an instant top up. As for other mods, I will leave the choices up to you, but you'll obviously want to make the suit as tough as possible. The armour underneath the suit doesn't really matter, as this is a power armour build, 
so wear whatever you feel is the most fitting. I originally designed the character to play a support role for your follower, providing suppressing fire and taking down any weak enemies. As time went on though, I realised just how powerful this build is. You're an absolute tank, so you can take a ludicrous amount of damage, so you want to put yourself on the front lines in every combat situation, taking the bullets to your chest and effectively taking down enemies with a hail of gunfire. For roleplaying, focus on a mix of eliminating anyone you see as a threat to the American way of life and helping or healing humans you come across. The medic views mutants the same way as he did the Chinese, and will rarely ever help them, viewing them as the enemy to his own goals. As a little additional goal for this build, try to clear out all the different hospital and medical locations in the Commonwealth. Thank you all for watching my latest Fallout 4 build. The builds I have coming up over the next couple of months are some really special ones, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of them. If you're looking for more stuff to watch right now, then I'd recommend either looking through the various playlists on my channel, or checking out the different feature channels, as there is a great mix of different content between them all.